chat. Um, I think uh, everyone here has probably seen, but in case anyone's watching on YouTube, uh, right now we are trying to uh, raise money for R4DS. So if you can go to r4ds.io slash donate.html uh, and see our whole story of why this is a big deal right now, uh, that would be awesome. All right. And that's also why I just finished these slides five minutes ago, basically. <laughs> uh, so today we are going to talk about dates and times. Uh, the timing of that is uh, you know, somewhat intentionally uh, perfect because this is gonna be our last meeting for a few weeks while we wait for time zone issues to work out between at least US and Europe. And we'll see that at the end. Um, <clears throat> so, Today, what we're hoping to uh, to learn is we should be able to create date and date time objects. We should be able to work with date time components. Um, we should be able to perform arithmetic on time spans and, and recognize some different types of time spans. And we should recognize ways to deal with time zones in R. Um, and the only packages I think we use are Tidyverse and NYC Flights 13. All right. So for starters, we'll get some vocabulary. Um, there are three types of date time objects. Uh, date, uh, it'll show up as that bracket date in a tibble. There's time, this is where, so sorry, date is you know just like uh, just the day. So it's today is, uh, was it March 8th, 2024? Um, that's a date. Time is just the time, so it's like, 106 p.m. or 1306 uh, right now. That's just time, and that's the HMS package. There isn't a like native way to deal with just times in R. Then there's date time, where it's a date and a time. Um, technically, this is like you don't necessarily think in these, but these are what you're using most of the time when you say, you know, let's meet Friday at two o'clock or at one o'clock, whatever. Um, that's really a date time that you're expressing. Um, he recommends in the book, or they recommend in the book to always use the simplest um, structure that you can. But I do wanna, like, I wanna distress here. Time zones, time zones are evil, time zones are dangerous. And so, uh, you know, if you say, for example, you know, I want this on March 15th, well, the meaning of even just March 15th depends on what time zone you're in because it changes at different points in the time or in the day. So sometimes like if you're being careful, use a date time and, and specify the time zone. Uh, and that's the only way to really be certain about what a time means. Uh, the simplest things from Lubridate for working with dates and times, there's the today function that will give you the date. And there's the uh, now function that gives you the date with a timestamp. You can see that I built this uh, <laughs> just before this meeting started. Um, now by default is going to use your local time zone, whatever your system is set to. And so you can see that for me, it's set to uh, central standard time. Uh, so the first thing that they go into is just use how to use read CSV with dates. If you have dates and um, times in a spreadsheet, if it's in the format why why or you know year month day and then optionally hours minutes seconds, read CSV is just going to read that in, uh, and it'll figure it out and it does pretty okay. Although um, you know if, if time zones aren't specified, it's going to assume. Um, now I can't remember if it assumes UTC or if it assumes your time zone. Uh, I don't know if he says that. Um, because I, I think it assumes UTC. It doesn't show there. So I'm not sure. Um, so that is something to check. <laughs> that can be confusing because if you are reading a spreadsheet that doesn't specify a time zone, it might be in your time zone and it might be in some other time zone. And so that's something that you'll usually want to watch out for. Uh, and then 
if it isn't in that format, or if you need to specify more carefully, um, you can look at the cal date time function in Redar, um, but you you need to specify the format that it's in. So you tell it, you know, where are where is the year component in your string? Where's the month name or the month number or different things? And there are all these different format strings. There are a standard that's actually fairly standard across programming languages, which is one of the very few things where that's true. Um, so like capital B, uh, I don't know why it's B, but B means month name. Uh, that could be from a non-English language, or it could be just because that was the letter they had available. I can't remember. Um, lowercase B is the abbreviated month name. They're, you know, Lowercase y is two digit year. There are all these specifications for what these different things mean. And it's a pretty long list. Uh, it's in the book, it's in uh, call date time. You can find those. Um, for things like B or lowercase b, where it's the month name, obviously that depends on what language you're in. And so you also should specify locale if you're, it, it's gonna assume, um, read R assumes English. Um, I'm pretty sure R itself assumes your locale, whatever it's set to, but read R has that uh, we talked about before that it always sets to a standard locale so that you don't have differences between systems. Uh, so just watch out for that. Um, the next like family of functions from Luberdate are these YMDHMS functions. So that's year, month, day, hour, minute, second. And there are like combinatorial versions of that function. Um, yeah, so lo the locale in Radar uh, does default to UTC. That's right. So when it reads in a date, date time, it's going to assume that the date time is UTC. Um, there, so there's, yeah, there's month, day, year, M MDY, MYD, uh, all the different formats. And you can leave off HMS or you can have just like HM. So YMD underscore HM. Uh, all of those are ways to, to specify this that we were talking about here with the um, like the date formatting. So it's just shorthand notation to do that. Those are really handy functions to the point that they're so much easier to me to remember um, and so much cleaner most of the time that a lot of times I just tell read R to read it in as text and then use Luberdate to convert it to date time. If it's anything that's gonna be at all complicated, you can just say, hey, read R, that's character. And then Luberdate, deal with it, make it actual date and time. Um, again, by, by default, it's going to put everything in UTC. We won't, we're gonna work almost exclusively in UTC until the last section of this book. Um, and yeah, that's all the, that's pretty much all on that. Um, those are just nice convenience functions. He shows in the book where, you know, if you rearrange the YMD portion, um, depending on the string that will figure out different things because it will take uh, two digit years as well. If you tell it that the, that that's a year. Uh, the next type of uh, function in Luberdate are these make date and make date time. This is where if you have in your data separate columns for your month, day, hour, minute, maybe second, whatever, um, you can use make date time and give it your month, day, hour, minute, for example, in this example, and it'll turn it into a date time. Or you can use make date and they'll turn it into a date. Um, I think more often I'll, eh, probably about equally often, I end up going the other direction where I wanna pull out the year, month, day, whatever. But sometimes you wanna combine things back together. So that's what these are for. Um, all right. And then next we have uh, as date and as day, date time. Um, these are most useful in the case where sometimes things will be given as you know, basically you'll just see a really big number for the date or for the date time. And that is the number of seconds since what's called the Unix epoch, which is uh, midnight 1970, uh, January 1st, 1970. 
And so uh, if you do as date, that's going to be thinking in days since that uh, moment in time. And if you do as date time, it's gonna be doing seconds from that moment in time. Um, this is a really uh, like standardized way to store times. Um, will be as just the number of seconds since the Unix, Unix epoch. That's really what um, pretty much anywhere most times are like thinking in that. So that's what they are under the like under the hood. It's those number of seconds. And so if you do like as date uh, 365, so that's you know a year of worth of days and we can do 10 times that and add to, I thought it was interesting that he just did this in the book and he didn't point out that 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 you did that because he wanted to include the two leap years that were in that span. And so that takes the 10 years after 1970-0101 and takes us to 1980-0101. Similarly, as date time, we can take uh, 10 hours, uh, 60 minutes per hour, 60 seconds per minute. And so we're going to go 10 hours after the beginning of the Unix epoch. Um, the the main like th this is fairly common i'd say if you are getting data from any sort of computerized system there will be a there will often be a field that is just you know it says date time but it's just this big number that is the number, number of seconds so that's where that can be really useful and then uh i kind of referenced this that you can take the date time object and go back to year, month, hour, uh, minute, second. And then there's also day um, where you need to specify, do you mean the day of the month, which would be kind of, you know, if you're looking at this date, day is A, if you do M day, day is actually works as a alias for M day in that case. Day of the year, um, I have that here of, it happens that today is the 68th day of the year. And then W day tells you day of the week. And for W day and for month, there's this label argument that you can tell it, I want um, not just a numeric day, but I want to know what day is it. So today is Friday and it'll return that as a factor, an ordered factor. Um, it's where you know Friday is uh, within the week. And there is an argument that I didn't show here of when does the week start? Does it start on Sunday or Monday, basically? Uh, technically, I think you can tell it it starts on Wednesday if that's what you want to do. Uh, and uh, so that's, you know, W. Dale return that. And then there's also an argument, um, uh, uh, a brev, I think, or abbreviation. I don't remember how much they... Um, Sorry, how much they they abbreviate that? ABBR is the is the argument, which is do we show fry or Friday? So if you say by default ABBR is true, but if you added ABBR equals false, this would say Friday instead of fry. Um, you know, all of these can be useful depending on what kind of data analysis you're doing. A lot of times, the day of the week is more important than the date. Um, I used to do um, work for a company that did uh, like online homework and people wanted to always look at like year over year, how do we compare how, to how we were last year? And I had to teach everyone of don't do that by date, do it by like day because homework on Sunday and homework on Thursday are more consistent than homework on March 7th every year, whatever day March 7th happens to be. And so that was where we had to really carefully look at what day of the week is it, not just what is the date. Um, it, that, By the way, that was uh, something really interesting. Um, during the pandemic, it had always been that basically students didn't do homework on weekends. You could see the day of the week and the times. And we had like really consistent for years and years of when students would do homework. And uh, like it shifted during the pandemic to where people wanted to like just have their class days on the week and then they would stop at five o'clock and then do homework on the weekend. Um, 
and we could kind of see, oh, things are getting back to normal because the homework pattern has returned to what it always used to be. Um, so that was really interesting to see. Uh, all right, next, there are functions for rounding date times. There's round date, floor date, and ceiling date. And in all of these, you give it a date time object and the out, uh, the unit you want to round to. Um, they're just like round floor and ceiling in base R for normal numbers, uh, where round it goes uh, up or down depending on um, you know what the minutes or what the the unit is. Um, floor always goes down and ceiling always goes up. I should have, so I define date time here as it's it was uh, 1932, 28. I'm, I'm a little ahead of schedule on that. I thought I might be hitting close to exactly where we were, but um, I should have done it 1930, 00, because this is using R rounding. Um, so it's going to technically round 0 0.5 to even, not round 0 0.5 up, um, because that's something that R does in general, which is different than uh, a lot of computer uh, round functions, because it's um, statistically slightly more often or more correct. So um, that's something to, I don't know, watch out for that if you round in JavaScript, or you know, if you're comparing to someone else's code, if it happens to be exactly the 0 0.5, you're gonna get a different number or you, you have a 50% chance of getting a different number than what someone else's code would get in a different programming language. Uh, all right, that's that. You can update components of a uh, date time. So again, my date time was uh, 2024, 0308, 1932, 28. And if we, say year of that is 2030, then it just takes that thing that I had set up and sets the year to 2030 um, within that date time object. We can you know, likewise do hour and uh, take the original one and add one and it'll just, it'll bump it up an hour. Um, or you can use this update function, which is a uh, like a base R method and then they make a, or base R generic that they make a method for for date times where you can say, okay, I want the years to be 2024 and the months to be two. I thought, thought it really interesting because in the book, they said just year and month, and that'll actually give you a warning because the the actual, well, it gives me a warning because I have warnings uh, uh, turned on when it is doing partial matching. It's actually looking for years, months, M days, that kind of thing. And it'll, it will do partial matching, but I just, I don't know. I thought it was interesting that they don't use the exact uh, argument. Um, so yeah, update, you can use that to totally change the date to uh, or the object to what you want. That can be can be useful if you just want to um, kind of fairly manually construct it. Uh, but it's often more useful. Let's see, it's, we're going to talk about this in a moment where more often more useful to say I want to add an hour or I want to add a day because what that means can be a little tricky and so um, we'll see that in a minute. All right, Lubridate also actually in some of this exists in base R. Some of this is a Lubridate invention that there are uh, different concepts of time spans. So there's a duration which is like how many seconds have elapsed or how much time has elapsed. Um, in Lubridate, it's specifically in seconds. Period is thinking in human units where I can say, I wanna add a day, I wanna add a month, and it does what you mean. Um, and we'll see why that, that doesn't always happen with durations. And then intervals where you are where you have a start and an end on them. All right, so we'll see some examples. Uh, so my age right now is uh, apparently, or it was, yeah, it still is right now, 17,941 days. Um, and but if we look at as duration from Lubridate, uh, it's that's always in seconds in Lubridate. So in um, the what we're trying to show here is that in base R, when you do this math and, and create this object, the object could be in days, it could be in seconds, it could be in years, depending on kind of 
this uh, heuristic that um, FaceR uses, and it's confusing to pull that information out of it versus the Lubridate duration object, it's always in seconds. It'll print and tell you that it's about 49.12 years, uh, but it stores it as seconds all the time. Um, Lubridate has these functions like D days, D hours, D minutes, D seconds, that's duration days. Um, and you can use uh, uh, um, uh, arithmetic with them. So D days zero to three plus D hours two, it's zero days plus two hours, uh, you know, one day plus two hours, two days plus two hours, et cetera. So that's, those are functions that you can use for simple math of uh, exact time amounts. The next uh, type of object is this period. So um, days one is using, is creating a period object that is uh, this lubridate object of a period one day. And um, I didn't show it perfectly in the notes here, I guess. No, I should have shown that. So D days are is going to be like exactly 24 hours, you know, 24 times 60 times 60, that number of seconds. It's always exactly that number of seconds um, versus periods are, you know, a day. So I showed this because, and I can't believe that I forgot to put in the other one. That if you do D days, this is uh, this this weekend is spring forward in the U.S. So in the America Chicago time zone, from one o'clock or from one a.m. Um, if we add an hour or if we add a day, uh, we should be going to the eleventh at one a.m. Um, if I had done D days, it would be going to the eleventh at 2 a.m. because of that spring forward happening. If you had just exactly one day, it becomes 2 a.m. Sometimes that's what you mean, um, but most often it's not. And so that's why this period object exists. Did that at least kind of make sense? I'm sorry that I don't include the example that uh, makes it clearer. It's possible I have that later in the notes. We will see. All right. Uh, Lubridate also has these interval objects. Um, they introduced this uh, infix dash dash where you can take a date time and then that infix and then another date time and you use that to create an interval from um, 2023, you know, from the January 1st, 2023 to January 1st, 2024. That's what they're uh, calling this Y 2023. Y2024 is from January 1st to January 5th. And then um, they did this to show that if you say how many days, how many like period days are in 2023, it's 365. How many days are in 2024? It's 366 because 2024 is a leap year. Um, even though they're both defined as kind of what looks like a year. All right. Ah, uh, yes, that is a good thing to point out, Gabby, that the, you know, this, this percent, dash, dash, percent, if you are, like, working with these a lot, internalize that as that means two. So 2023-0101 to 2024-0101, it's just, it's helpful to be able to read code in words. And uh, yeah, that's a good thing to, to point out. All right. And then... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I'm testing uh, that uh, division uh, with D days, and um, it gave the same results. Yeah, uh, here. Even here though it's, it's, it's a second, so I, I I expect the interval is not really expressed as seconds. So, um, so it, it gave three sixty five. Like, yes. It, yes. yeah, 365 and 366 or, it, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's because, so here, yeah, here it would be the same with D-Days because it's um, it's exactly what is the time span between these two points in time. Like if you ask a uh, a D-Day, like D, D years one divided by D-Days, it says it's 365.25 
days because yeah, that's the average that's right. number. Yes, of course. It's it's because you have the forward and backward daylight. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And so you you are setting like an exact time span, and so it's it knows how many seconds are in yeah. there. Perhaps yep. if you would take half a year, it would be different. And and I'll bet if you did divide by d years. I don't know, that'd be, you'd get weird. I'm not sure what result you would get. If it's going <laughs> to come out, like divide by years, oh, yeah. one, it would probably be one, but divide by D years, it would be different numbers, I think. Um, I'll try. <laughs> yes, it's 0 0.999. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> Versus, and then the second one should be longer than, it should be higher than one because it's more than, 365.25. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. All right. And then we'll get into my nemesis. Uh, and I used some very specific examples for this. Time zones. So time zones, Liberdate's pretty good with dealing th with them. Um, there is also a, a separate package clock, which is intended in, to theoretically someday be the backend, a new backend for Liberdate. It does slightly better or slightly, it's easier to update time zone information because uh, we aren't really going into it in this, but time, the definition of a time zone can change. Um, and Luberdate doesn't have that built in right now. And so things can go haywire. Um, for example, I think it was, I think this year is the first time, or maybe it was last year was the first time that Mexico is not observing daylight savings time anymore. Um, I think it was last year that they started that. And so the definition of the time zone in Mexico City is, I believe, incorrect in Base R and Luberdate right now. Um, because it's like it's not constantly updated versus there's the TZDB package that will allow you to like update to the latest definition of the time zone. Um all that said, I can't remember. I don't know when the definition, like when the ruling was that uh, the the announcement that they were going to stop observing daylight savings. So it's possible it knows. Okay, they're going to stop observing, and so it has it built in. Um, that's just something to watch out for. Lebanon last year is the other example that they uh, there was an uh, like mandate that they were going to change how they observe daylight savings, but it was during Ramadan, and like part of the uh, country observed the change and part didn't and so it was a big mess um and actually i don't know if any database has that captured because it depends exactly who wrote the time date and time down of what which um you know which time zone it was in anyway that's a diversion uh i what i did is i took here um the, the start of our book club today is uh you know, it's the date plus the time, and you say TZ equals America Chicago. Um, he talks a little bit in the book about how, like, you should use these more specific um, definitions of the time zone. So, you know, I could say central or uh, CST, um, but CST has multiple meanings. I think in the database, it technically is, like, taken to mean central standard time. Um but America Chicago like is the time in Chicago on that date at that time. And then it kind of, it figures out what the time zone settings should be. Um, I should have printed that and it'll show you that it prints as CST when you do that. So it would say here, 1300 CST, if I printed the first line. Uh, the first function that we talk about here is there's this force TZ. Um, and so I'm forcing that Time that I had set to be the Europe, uh, the Rome time zone. You should only do this to fix mistakes in time zones because what it's going to do is it's going to keep this. It keeps the definition of the time, but changes the time zone. And you know, usually that's not what you mean. If you're saying, "Oh, I want to convert that to Europe uh, to Rome time," you probably don't want to just <laughs> change the same time to be in Rome. So 1 p.m. Uh, Rome. No, you, that's not usually not what you want. Usually what you want is this with TZ where you say, I want to take that time that you defined, that date time, and 
Uh, tell me what that date time is in UTC. So it's 2024, 308, 1900 UTC. Or tell me what it is in Rome. Uh, it would be 20, uh, so 8 p.m. CET. Or in Sydney, um, it's actually tomorrow, 6 a.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Daylight Time. So um, using like... Uh, I I have been so conditioned by ha being burned by time zone things that I almost always write America Chicago as my time zone now. I don't. I, it's not central. It's America Chicago. That's a much better, much more specific time zone. Um, and the the reason I brought up Mexico City is, uh, you know, Mexico City is also central time. It's like the same time zone today, but on Sunday it will no longer be the same time zone as America Chicago because they don't observe daylight savings and uh, US does. All right. Um, and so, yeah, daylight savings time. Um, I, may, I set this up just specifically to talk about why we take a break. If we take the, the club starts, we just say, okay, it's the Chicago time, and then we're gonna go from today and for the next five weeks. And so plus weeks zero to five, if we look at the hour uh, in America, Chicago time, it's always 13. So, okay, cool. I set up that object. It's always at 1 p.m. Let's take that and uh, convert it to Europe, to, to Rome, and look at the hour. And today it's 20, but then there's three weeks, which I'm sure Floris is aware of. I, I should have put yours in there, that it's 19. And then Europe starts... Uh, daylight saving time and it goes back to being what it was before uh similarly so or not similarly unfortunately if we just look at utc it's it's you know today it's 19 and then throughout the summer it will be 18 so theoretically we could do the daylight or we could do the club starts in utc but if you think about that if we did that the time would change for everyone who does observe daylight savings it would suddenly become a an hour uh, later, I believe. Uh, I get confused. No, it'd be it would be an hour earlier, but it would be confusing for everyone who has daylight savings. Right now, we have more, more people who observe daylight savings in the clubs than don't, and so we go with daylight savings. It's but it's a mess, and I'm sorry, Southern Hemisphere especially his Southern Hemisphere that observes daylight savings, that if we look at like Sydney in Australia, uh, right now it is 6 a.m. is our start time. For four weeks, it'll be 5 a.m. And then they do their fall back and it'll be 4 a.m. And so uh, if you're working internationally, it can't work partly because of daylight savings and mostly because of daylight savings, basically in different places do daylight savings at different times. And it's painful. Um, I thought it was very funny. The example he uses in the book for a daily or for a with TZ, because he wanted to show that there are half hour time zones. And so he used this Lord Howe Island. Um, Lord Howe Island, I knew before I started learning about it from time zones because they have these bugs called, uh, Lord Howe Island stick insects, also known as tree lobsters. Uh, they're just giant bugs. So they like bugs and they also like time zone bugs because, okay, you know, we saw Sydney, it sucked six, five, 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 four, whatever. Okay. Lord Howe Island. Yeah. Oh, that's the hours the same. They have that same transition. But if you look at minutes for the next five weeks, Sydney is logically always zero. And Lord Howe, when they do their fall back, it's a half hour. They change their clocks by half hour, and therefore <laughs> it's just a mess. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, so yeah, it's they they change. The, you know, their spring forward is by thirty minutes um, because they are. I mean, I, whatever. They're they're the argument being that they're like right on the border of two time zones, but no, don't do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna late or early for every meeting um and i don't know if you know about um 
about Venezuela because right now it's it's already they 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 are not doing it anymore. But with Venezuela, when Chavez was in in charge, he was still alive. At some point, he he also put a thirty minute difference. Um, so it was crazy because we Venezuela don't observe um daylight savings, but so but they do they do the part of a, a half a, a half an hour, um. Just they, they wanted to be different. They said, okay, yeah. we, we want our own time zone and we want it to be um with half an hour difference. And so it was a mess for the simplest thing because <laughs> in the past we used to be, okay, we are at the same time at, for example, Miami. And right. once in a while, it, it, it will be an hour difference, but now it's a half an hour, it's an hour and a half. It's, I don't know. So I I, I was kind of pissed with, with, with all of that, but... Uh, Whatever. At the end, they 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 also acknowledged it, it. It didn't help with anything, so they they reverted it. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 a mess. That half an so, hour issue is is really a mess. Like, yeah, that's that's bad enough. And there are a number. Um, uh, Sri Lanka slash India are, uh, they're one of the half hour. They have one of the half hour time zones. Um, Iran has a half hour time zone, and then they're like, uh. Nepal is uh, 45 minutes. So they've got like, they're, they're a mess. And there's one other, there's one in Australia that's a half hour all the time. But Lord Howe Island, as far as I know, is the only one that does daylight savings by half an hour. So part of the year, they're off by a half hour. Part of the year, they're off by full hour. And it's just that, that blew my mind when I found that. They used to have a special call out in the Book Clubber app because I do all this stuff to deal with time zones in there. And I had a just a um a comment in there, Lord Howe Island, you know what you did. <laughs> and so it didn't work right for them. It just I couldn't help it. Um it mostly works right for them now, I think, but it's hard. Um so yeah, that's that's all I have. Uh but man, um right, yeah, that's all the meeting notes. Time zones are hard. Um there's no like you know, getting rid of daylight savings would help a lot, but it's still, there isn't an easy answer. Um, I haven't gotten to the part on, uh, uh, there's the the show uh, For All Mankind that's about, it's like alternative history of space exploration and they have a Mars colony on there. Once we have Mars colonies, it's going to be even worse because Mars is a, is it a 24 hours and 37 minutes or it's 23 hours and 37 minutes, something like that is their day. Just because that's that's how long it takes for their for Mars to uh, rotate. It's funny because it's so close to exactly the same as Earth that it makes you think, oh, it should just be the same. But that's just total coincidence that it's that close. It could have been 13 hours. Um, but yeah, once we have a Martian colony, then we'll have even crazier time zones. Uh, so it, it, it just... Is that a tomorrow problem? So. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, but apparently... Apparently we can generate these problems. Uh, I know, um, especially if you're working with historical data, you gotta be really careful because um, like these these time zones have all of the changes in the past built in, um, at least as much as long as it was carefully defined. Um, the uh, Canadian um, province, Newfoundland, or Newfoundland, um, used to uh like they they stuck on sun time much longer than most of the world where their time zone wasn't defined relative to uh Greenwich or UTC it was when the sun rose on the eastern edge of their island because that was the first sunrise in North America and they wanted to like make that that's what their time was based on so they stuck with that longer and it was I think until relatively recently, they were off by like 35 minutes because that was the closest to, you know, exactly right or whatever for them. Um, so yeah, times are crazy. I, I had, um, I've had lots of weird Tidy Tuesday things of dealing with time zones and they're, you know, thankfully for something like Tidy Tuesday, I can just throw away data that's confusing or ambiguous. Um, for something you're working with, if you're looking at historical records, 
you know, just be careful. <laughs> it might not mean what you think. Oh, I, I went down a rabbit hole with this because Hadley has a footnote about how GMT and UTC are the same thing. They're usually the same thing. Um, almost always now, but I, I found that GMT, at least in astronomy, used to be defined as noon was the start of the day. And so if you look at things before 1925 that say that they're recorded in 1920 or recorded in GMT and it's uh astronomical uh if it's you know 10 you know, 10 o'clock that means 10 p.m and 23 means 11 a.m the next day um and so all these things where if you're look you know if you're working with historical data you just have to make sure you know what system were they using to record these things um and the further you go back the more of a mess it can be Anyway, that's a, that's a, yes. I, you know, this is the main thing that I wanted to talk about is that, you know, it is what it is. And so we just don't meet for three weeks. And then, you know, we don't meet during these three weeks. And then most of us come back and sync. Not everyone, but most. So go ahead. In general, a general, um, what would I say, recommendation would be to work. Like if I'm if I'm not working with um, dates that far back uh, historically, but let's say my 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 furthest furthest back is 1940, 1980, I don't know. And right. should I be working always in UTC? Is that a general recommendation or? A... That's the like, if I'm going to make a general recommendation, I would say always work in UTC. Um, but it is situation specific. You know, sometimes what you care about is day and night. And so converting everything to UTC isn't going to help you. You need to know what is day and night locally. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a whole exactly. other kind of worms because yeah. yeah. that changes yeah. throughout yeah. the year. Uh, yeah. But yeah, um, so either local or UTC, it kind of depends what you're working with. Um, I can't think of cases where I would do something other than that. Although the the other recommendation I have is, you know, for like coordinating meetings and things, you might notice that in the channels, I often try to say, you know, in about 15 hours, we will meet because that has the same meaning. <laughs> like, I don't care what your time zone has changed to that 15 hours from now is 15 hours from now, which actually that was always a funny thing when I worked with the online homework that um, like we'd have instructors who thought that students could change their time zone setting and change when the due date was. It's mm -hmm. like, well, they can change when it says the due date is, but it's That's a moment in time. <laughs> like it's not, it's not giving them extra time to turn it in. Um, and so that was always a, a whole thing that we had to deal with people understanding that, you know, reporting of time versus like that exact moment in time, that number of seconds after beginning of the Unix epoch. So uh yeah times are hard. <laughs> I don't mean well times are also hard, but <laughs> I mean uh date times are hard. <laughs> um so but yeah uh, Luberdate does a really good job of you know unless you're doing something weird, it works. Uh and then if you are working with times that were recorded last year, last spring in Lebanon. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, but make sure you talk to whoever recorded those times and find out what what they thought time zones meant at the time. Um, or if you're working, like we had, uh, if you look back in Tidy Tuesday, there's tornado data and I had to throw swaths of that away because the way it was recorded didn't make any sense. Um, some of them appeared to have been uh, converted to UTC. Um, and then, but other ones, it would like, it said, it said a time zone, but it really looked like, no, that you already did the conversion, but you're telling me that it's still in central time or whatever. Um, cause it, it was just a time in the, there was a field that was the like time of day and then a different field that was the time zone, except the time zone wasn't, was a number and the table defining that number wasn't available anywhere. So I had to figure out, okay, 10 means this one and six means this other one. And they're not cons consecutive. 
Um, anyway, so time, dates and times, my, my great nemesis <laughs> have been for many years. I'm still, so I am still trying to solve this problem. Uh, like, I don't want to skip for three weeks, but with, you know, uh, a little over a dozen different meetings right now going and we have clubs starting and stopping, we collide. You know, if we just say, oh, every club can vote, do you, what time are you going to vote or uh, meet? Well, then clubs start running into one another because they, they could shift two hours relative to one another. Anyway, so uh, given all that, we will see you on this one <laughs> in uh, in four weeks. And that is when we will meet again, when things come back together. I'm sorry uh, if you do not observe daylight savings time. It'll be at a different time. If you are uh, in you know, Australia or uh, uh, I know some South American countries observe daylight savings and so it becomes a two hour shift. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's the problem with the global community. Um, we do often after this break and it's less, you know, talk about it during the break and then we'll do it after the break of just totally revote in some places because if the club is too much of a mix of some people observe daylight savings and some people don't. And so like half the club isn't available at that time anymore. Um, we'll, we would do a rebid to find a time that works for everybody. Uh, but as far as I know, you know, let me know if it's not going to work, if the time's not going to work it for you anymore. Um, and yeah, Google calendar can do pretty well. Uh, oh, that's, uh, Gabby reminded me of, um, it's not a pet peeve, but it's just something that I noticed that a lot of times people put the S to mean that they think it means um, like that you just use that for the name of the time zone. Like I'm in EST. Well, you're in EST today, but on Sunday, you'll be in EDT. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're in ET all the time. And I'm not, like I said, it's not a peeve. I'm not, not yelling at you or anything, but it's just something that people will do. They're like, oh, it's the standard time. It's It's the it's our time. It's the standard. It's like, well, no, that means not daylight savings. <laughs> so, um, no, it's, it's okay. Um, so yeah, there's, you know, there's all that. It, it's just, it's a mess. Um, I have the example with, you know, this comes out the Europe, uh, Rome is CET, but if we go forward uh, a couple of weeks, it's CEST, uh, just like EST versus EDT. Um, different places like that use, you know, is it summertime or is it daylight saving time? Um, it's all, it's all confusing and someday it'll be less confusing. Maybe <laughs> it is. And the one that really just, it's funny to me that the leading contender for how the U S is going to get rid of daylight saving time isn't. And, and this is what a, several places have done is you don't eliminate it. You go to daylight saving time all the time which means you're like off by an hour from what people decided a hundred years ago, the time zones should have been, should be you're like, no, they were wrong. We want, we want to be that spring forward uh, off by an hour in that direction where noon is permanently an hour away from when the sun is at its highest. Um, whatever. <laughs> it's better than uh, I guess it's better. It, you know, used to be that it, every city set their clock and that's what time it was there you didn't and so if you like traveled by train you didn't know what time it was going to be when you got to the location because their definition of noon might be different from your definition um and it was basically as we started to have fast travel <laughs> that that became a problem because if it takes you a day to get there you don't really care <laughs> if it's off by an hour or 15 minutes or whatever but when you're traveling by train and especially by plane you want the times to have a meaning Anyway, all right, that is it. I am going to uh, see everybody on Slack. In, and I'll see you here in four weeks, which some might call a month, but it depends on what month you're talking about, whether four weeks is a month. So. <laughs>